Now, all week we've been bringing you insights and analysis of this year's big events. And next up, we're talking about global trade. It is a vital engine of economic development. It allows countries, large corporates and SMEs to integrate into the global economy, boosting a greater range of goods and services and also raising standards of living globally. Given its influence, trade also has a major role to play in helping to meet the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Well, to look at why finance for sustainable trade is, has become increasingly important and indeed how the International Chamber of Commerce's new sustainability framework will help make an impact, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined in the studio by Pamela Marr, Managing Director of the ICC's Digital Standards Initi Initiative, and Ravi Hansbell. Now, Ravi is a partner focused on trade and supply chain finance in BCG's London office. It's very good to see both of you. Welcome to Cybos TV and, of course, the last day of the Cybos event itself. But look, Pamela, let me start first with you. I mentioned there in that introduction the sustainability, the, the sustainable global economy in mm -hmm. the context of the UN Sustainability Development Goals. But why does trade have a crucial role in helping us achieve sustainability in the wider economy? And what is the significance of this in the context of supply chains, which are no longer straightforward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, if we think about over two thirds of global trade, actually takes place in global supply chains and global value chains. And <clears throat> if we think about one step further, um, over half of global emissions are attributable to global value chains. Okay, so basically global value chains are simply an organizing principle for us to take forward the, um, the Paris Accord and to drive global emissions down to so that we reach net zero. Um, the underlying oil of global value chains is actually trade finance. It's uh, what suppliers use to pay for raw materials and, and to process the whole order so that it actually gets delivered to you and me. So when we say, OK, we want to make sustain, uh, trade finance more sustainable, we're simply using finance as a lever to raise sustainability performance in global value chains through means that are very clear. Energy efficiency, you know, renewable energy, sustainable transport, moving to sustainable materials and so on. So um, the purpose of our framework is to provide a common standard, a harmonized language to make, sus what, to make sustainable supply chains um, accessible to everyone, to basically demystify what constitutes a sustainable trade transaction and a sustainable supply chain. Okay, so that's, the, that's a brilliant explanation, a very comprehensive overview. So Ravi, come into this. How can you actually develop finance packages or trade finance packages which are sustainable? How do you define them and why are they so complex? Do they have to be so complicated? So I think almost start that with why is sustainable trade so complicated? And I think what some people fail to realise when you know we've got green, green bond principles and all of that, trade is different because it's a flow business. So you, know, you can look at the purpose of a transaction if you're building a wind farm, great. But in trade, let's use an example of, of electric vehicle supply chain. Now, from a purpose level, that might be all around decarbonizing an auto manufacturer. But what about the rest of the supply chain? Let's look at batteries within that supply chain. How are they manufactured? How sustainable are the raw materials? How is it transported? So I'm pretty sure there be, might be a sort of heavy fuel ship involved in some place. So it's not just about the purpose. And what that means is that actually to really define and look at sustainable trade, you need to identify, or at least what we as the ICC call, each component mm. of trade being the buyer, the supplier, the goods or services being exchanged, the way of transportation, as well as that purpose at the end of it. And I suppose that's a construct for our framework. In terms of definitions and how we define sustainable trade and trade finance, it's actually quite simple once you break it into those components. It's any trade from a supplier, um, a sustainable or a socially responsible supplier to a sustainable or socially responsible buyer of sustain sustainable or socially responsible goods or services um, through or via sustainable or socially responsible transport and then for what we all know quite commonly in sustainable finance as sustainable purposes um, similar to the green bond principles. So I suppose it's that transparency and complexity and all these different components that make uh, sustainable trade so complex. Now 
there's another side to it, which is also the risk of getting it wrong, which is very valid in trade. It's quite easy to forget that banking, it's not all about developed markets and, um, and large corporates. A huge element of all banking, and especially trade, are the long tail of SMEs and emerging markets. And what's seen as sustainable for certain markets might not be in others, it might just not be feasible in others. And similarly, mandating standards on corporates, that might work in some, some industries, but in SMEs, actually it, become a, it can become a hurdle. And if you set standards wrongly, actually what you can end up doing is alienating some of the entities you actually want to support and be mm. detrimental rather than beneficial. Because there's so many well, pitfalls, potential pitfalls, but once you know what you're doing, you can avoid them because ultimately you don't want to harm the very thing that you're trying to support. But given all of that, what would you say, Pamela, are the key drivers for launching the ICC Sustainable Trade Project? And what do you hope to achieve with this? I mean, can you perhaps simplify things so that ultimately it's going to help Ravi? Yeah, so <clears throat> one, make it really clear to anyone operating on a supply chain the standard that they have to achieve in order to, um, in order to uh, have access to sustainable finance trade pools. On the finance side, you know, banks and financial institutions have all committed, you know, billions, trillions of dollars to say, okay, we're going to support uh, the global collective battle towards, um, you know, on, on climate change. And so they have to have a way to, um, <clears throat> to identify who qualifies for these sustainable finance pools, right? And the thing is, if you're a bank with really deep pockets, with a lot of expertise, you can develop your own standard. But if you're any other bank who's not large, who's perhaps in a developing market, who don't, doesn't have the technical expertise, you actually want something ready-made. So for both supply chain partners and the financiers, the ICC standards, our aim is actually, like I said, demystify, make it transparent, make it really clear across the industry uh, what qualifies. And then on the next level, once we have a common taxonomy, common definitions, we can actually join up and collaborate in terms of data sharing to actually drive forward the whole mission of making finance more sustainable, making supply chains more sustainable, and helping the world meet its sustainability objectives, you know, whether it's Paris or any of the social objectives. Mm. I mean, in a way, you've, you've actually answered one of the questions which I was going to put to Rafi. <laughs> don't, don't beat yourself up about it. But I mean, look, you've actually explained the ICC framework. And from your perspective, how do you see it operating, Ravi? And in particular, working in practice? Because we get the idea about how it's going to operate, but it's the reality, how it translates on the ground. And that's the really difficult bit. Sure. So I think the best way to answer that is a little bit about how it works, right? And probably the simplest way to describe it is food labels, you know, not too much fat, not too much salt, but for trade. And why do those exist? Simplicity, transparency, and just something common that everybody can understand and compare. So effectively, the way it works is for any transaction, um, a, effectively, a, a transaction get a tick across our two dimensions of sustainability at a high level, so environmental and socioeconomic, and the five components of trade I mentioned earlier. And what that does, it creates a sort of label or map. Um, for the moment, just keep it at ticks, keep it simple. But over time, we plan to turn it into actually a scorecard with grades, depending on how sustainable a transaction is. I suppose the big question is how it kind of comes into life is how do you get a tick? How do you actually mm. get recognized as sustainable? And we've taken a somewhat controversial approach. We, we don't think the ICC is in the place to set the standards for the same reasons Pamela, mm -hmm. Pamela outlined. Actually, what we want to do is map and what we have done is map all the existing standards we're going industry by industry there are 50 we've recognized for textiles alone and basically test them are they rigorous are they evidence-based are they objective not subjective are they widely adopted are they uh, are they comprehensive in terms of what they cover and if a transaction so a buyer supplier good service mode of transport whatever um, meets those standards they would qualify for a tick in the ICC framework. Cut to the chase, what does it mean? Um, if you meet your industry standards and their well-approved standards, you can almost immediately, either as a bank or an SME or a corporate, map your performance to this framework with no additional hurdles, hoops or jumps to go through. Um, and that's how it works in practice. Now, there are questions about how it 
actually works on the ground, who does what, what data passes between who and who and so. That is what we still need to work out, and it's why we, we're launching a pilot, which uh, I'm sure we can go into in a moment. Well, sadly, we can't because time is going against us. But you know what? This is such fa a fascinating area. And I know that the conversation is going to continue. And hopefully, if we meet next year in Toronto, you'll be able to tell me more about that pilot, the results, and how it's pushing you towards that tick standard. Because it's everybody's. Everybody gains from this. And there's an incredible sense of urgency about it. But it's, it's important to know that the groundwork is happening. In fact, it's gone beyond the groundwork, really. But look, we have to leave it there. Pamela Marr, director of the ICC's Digital Standards Initiative, and Ravi Hanspar, a partner focused on trade and supply chain finance in BCG's London office. Thank you both for joining us here on Cybos Television. We will see you again next year yep. in Toronto. And in the meantime, enjoy the rest of Cybos. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much.